For some reason, the Total War developers have decided to hide some crucial information and stats from the public, which I will be exposing now. I will be covering the hidden fatigue mechanics and debuffs, the attacked in the sides or rear debuffs, the ideal archer range for maximum damage, and I will be explaining all the unit stats. And trust me, you will be surprised how little you actually know about unit stats. The hidden fatigue mechanics and debuffs are interesting. I think everyone already knows that there are 6 fatigue stages, and those are fresh, active, winded, tired, very tired and exhausted. Once your units get tired, they will perform worse than when they are fresh. But what negative effect does each of these fatigue stages give to your units? When your unit is fresh, your unit will act normally. When your unit is active, it gets a 10% buff to their melee attack and melee defense, speed and reload time. So your ideal fatigue stage is when your unit is active. Once your units get winded, it gets a 20% debuff to their melee attack, reload speed and a 5% debuff to the unit speed itself. Once it's tired it get a 30% debuff and the debuffs will keeps on getting bigger until it's exhausted. I'll put the rest of the debuffs on the screen so if you want to take a closer look just pause it. So it's very important to keep your units fresh or active all the time. The best ways to do that is to second wind with your general ability to make the tired unit instant fresh or you can do this by cycle charging the tired unit with a fresh unit and let the tired unit rest in the back lines. So keeping an eye on how tired your units are is really important and you can do this just by hovering over the unit and it will tell you if it's fresh etc. So those are some very important hidden mechanics to remember. Now I want to ask you this question. Do you know what happens when you're getting attacked in the sides or rear? Getting attacked at one side of your unit will give you a 10% debuff at your melee attack and melee defense. That means when you're getting attacked in both sides of your unit, your unit will get a 20% debuff to the melee attack and melee defense. Once your unit get attacked in the rear, it will get a 30% debuff, so you definitely don't want to have your unit fully surrounded. Just keeping an eye on the fatigue of a unit and if it's not getting surrounded will help your unit perform a lot better in your game. The next question I get asked very often is Will your archers and slingers deal more damage when they're closer to the unit that they're firing at? Well, yes and no. There's an ideal range for your archers and slingers to fire from, where they will do most damage. And this is from 120 meters. In this game, there are archers with two different ranges, 150 range and 125 range. If you shoot with your archers from 120 range and your archer has already 40 missile damage, it will now do between 44 and 46 missile damage. So it will be above of around 5 missile damage, which you definitely want to have. Firing closer or further than that will only deal less damage, so firing point blank is not that effective. It also makes sense, because the arrow needs some time before to get to its maximum speed. And next up I want to quickly explain all the standard stats, because I bet a ton of you guys don't really understand how exactly these work. Alright, so there's melee attack. The higher the melee attack is of your unit, the bigger the chances that a soldier in your unit will land a hit on the enemy unit, and the damage that your unit will do when it hits is scorch your weapon damage. Melee defense works exactly opposite. If your unit has a high melee defense, it's less likely to get hit by an enemy unit. Understanding these stats will help you throughout the whole game, finding the best engagements and matchups for your units. If you hover over the weapon damage, you can see how much armor piercing the unit has. The higher the AP damage, the better you will do against armored units. Then there's bonus versus infantry and large. Swords got bonus versus infantry and spears got bonus versus large. What does it do? Well, if you have 10 bonus versus infantry, your unit will have 10 more melee attack and 10 more weapon damage when you're fighting another infantry unit, which is really strong. Then there's charge bonus. Charge bonus sounds really obvious, because the higher your charge bonus, the more kills your unit will get on the charge. Yes, that's true, but there are multiple different factors which decide how high your charge will be in-game. One of them is your mass. All the Rome 2 units are identified in different mass categories. Your unit can be super heavy, very heavy, heavy, medium, light, and very light. If your unit got a high mass, it will deal more damage on the charge. Mass is one of the most important factors on the charge. How do you know what mass your unit has? Hover over the unit and it will tell you in what mass category your unit the next factor which influences the charge is the unit speed. People ask a lot of times, will charging at the last second, because you're too late with your micro, do the same damage as a normal charge? No, because speed is a factor in the charge bonus, but it's not a major factor, so it won't be detrimental. Mass is a more important factor. And what people also often think about charge bonus is that the 20 charge bonus, let's say, will go on top of your weapon damage and melee attack. But that's not true, it's more percentage based. Next up we got armor. The armor is split in two values, the shield value and the body armor value. If you get shot frontally, the missiles will have to go through your shield value and your body armor value. But the shield and armor value don't add up to your health. The shield value works as a percentage to reduce the incoming missile hit chance. So a higher shield volume means that a smaller amount of incoming arrows will actually hit your unit's HP. So if you shoot from the non-shield side, this doesn't count. But before it can hit your unit's HP, there's body armor. This works a little bit different because this reduces the damage received from both melee and ranged. So if you're getting shot by a Cretan with 
20 missile damage. The body armor reduces this to maybe 30 or 35 missile damage that will hit your HP. And next up we got the stat HP, also known as health. The HP basically means how often you can get hit by a unit or by an enemy missile. The HP stat shows how tanky the unit is, together with the armor and in combat with the melee defense. So having a high HP is really important, especially against missile and pila fire. And the last stat is the base morale, which you probably think is the least important one. I think I would agree with you, but it still means definitely something, because a higher morale means that your unit will fight longer and this equals more kills and more damage dealt. I think it would be pretty interesting to rank all of these stats, but let me know in the comments what you think is the most important stat. And then I would recommend you to watch some of these army comms videos, where I will show how to make one of the best army comms for four different factions, where I will choose all the strong units of the faction because of their stats.